we are here today and we are happy to be in Linda Hollett Bazuzzi's new studio. And this is my first time here, Linda, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I know this building has had a few um, different things that have been in it, but I think this is the absolute perfect space for this because as an artist, you get the light, but you can control the light. It's nice, it's mm -hmm. bright, it's white, it's clean. So thank you for having us here and inviting us into your, your studio for the morning. We're gonna talk about this big piece that's standing in front of us that obviously is in process. Gorgeous, but tell us a little bit about this and the behind the scenes, if there's a series to this and all that good stuff. Wow. About a year ago, I took a trip to Matthews, I go down there every so often, and out to New Point Comfort. And I've done some paintings out there, there's a marsh field. Uh, it's a beautiful place to paint, very isolated. Coming back one time, it was later in the day, sun was starting to set, and all of a sudden, I was struck by the color of the water, the, the magenta that was coming up in the clouds. I was stopping like every 30 seconds to take a photograph, literally. And as I was changing, of course, the skies was changing, the, the color of the water was changing. So I started doing several things. This is the third. And the title of the will be New Point Comfort that time of the day. But, but it's interesting to always see what the artist has been inspired by and sort of what they take and how they make it their own. Right. Um, what Mother Nature gave us and then what the artist is creating. Which and is way different. Yeah. Exactly. Each, uh, so I always start off with several sketches. So I might do a page of sketches. Mm -hmm. Different ways to compose the painting in vertical, horizontal, or square, whatever. And then uh, think about the colors I would use. Often artists will kind of work all over the canvas completely and just keep on adding more and more. My technique is not only more direct but more uh, sectional. Mm -hmm. So I will finish the sky before I go down here. Gotcha. I will put some of the colors in down here and some of this may get up there but it, this is just the way I work. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the, the palette knife uh, process. It's not easy to go back in the next day and paint over. If I needed to adjust this and it's dry, I couldn't do that. Even the next day, well, where the white is, it would be still workable. But in some of these other areas down here, this would always be, all, already be too dry for it to, or tacky, for me to work in without you really seeing mm -hmm. uh, more texture than I like. And so the only reason this is down here is because right along this horizon line, I need to be able to work these colors together and these edges together so I don't get this hard line. So uh, this is what you see that I did in one day and I still had not back to it until today. Normally I have my paints laid out on my palette and I would mix them up. I do mix a larger batch of some colors but I like to keep changing it as I go along. This already needs to be a little bit lighter so I'll add some more white to it. I'd use a larger knife to lay down some of the colors smoothing it out as I go along, taking it to the edge of the cloud, referencing my photograph to make sure I've got a good idea. You know, I'm not overstepping my boundaries because I want the impression of spontaneity, even if it's not there. I think that helps with the energy. So I don't have to get it perfect. You'll notice with a large canvas, often you, with a knife particularly, you get a bounce back, mm -hmm. so I have to hold, hold it. it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'll lay it down sometimes sideways. If I get a really nice schmear, I might leave it. So often it's a slap and schmear <laughs> technique that I use. If I go up, I would change my blue. It will go up in here. Yeah, this I would reserve because it's going to be kind of a pure color, whereas some of the others where the clouds are blending with the sky, I would deliberately paint the sky and then put the color over top of it, like right here. But that's basically it. That's a great little um, teaching segue? lesson oh. segue <laughs> Yeah, of, of how Linda actually does her palette knife and so take note for those who are trying to learn to do and create with or a palette. Take knife. my class next time. Yeah, or take Linda's class next time. Which means you gotta time. get on my email list. That's because right. I, that's only way I can email <laughs> that's about right. it. Yeah. Well, speaking of palettes, I think these are, are, yeah, are very interesting. I'm gonna take this sure. one first and this just sort of thing. hold it up a little bit. Um, so artists work in different ways and this is just one of Linda's palettes that she was using let's go this way exactly all right used. so yeah. there we go this is part of that paint, say, just the yeah. sky when i lay my colors out whites yellows reds and oranges to purplish to, and then i make my purple and this would normally be my green field over here and then brown to blues to the sky so my sky is here my sky is 
here and all the way over, and then this is my ground mm -hmm. uh, in my painting. But in this case, since I knew I was only going to get to the sky uh, at this point, I expanded to even put the peach in there. And they're always laid out more or less the same way. I don't always use these colors. Some artists lay out their colors very specifically every single time, no matter what, they use the same colors. I tend to be more site specific, so I don't always put out these colors up here because I don't always need them. I just put out what I think I need. Well, thank you. That's very interesting to see what goes on with that. You can also actually learn a lot more from Linda by taking her class. She holds them on and off at Crossroads Art Center. Um, so make sure that you check our class pages for that. Mm -hmm. I'll go on my website. I list them. I even have a sign-up sheet if you want to get on my email list. Uh, so when I do sign up, when I do decide to do classes, which is usually in a range, like within a month, uh, you'll get first notice. And we will also give you um, Linda's contact information so you can follow her on Instagram and Twitter and on Facebook and all yes. that good stuff. So thank not you, thank you, thank you, thank you, not <laughs> thank, you, thank, you, thank, you thank you, thank you for all of your knowledge and well, sharing it with us today. Thank you for coming into my wonderful studio.